I'm hoping it will be helpful if I go through some of the cases that I have both owned previously and currently own, and we can talk about the pros and cons of some of them based on uh, those criteria points that I've just mentioned. So my first uh, kind of higher end uh, gig bag was this in case bag here. This was probably still to this day, one of the most solid feeling uh, indestructible gig bag type cases that, that I've had to date. The problem that came with that though, is it was also by far the heaviest gig bag that I've ever owned. It had two backpack straps on the back uh, and the interior was very well cushioned. But unfortunately, this in-case bag weighed more than some of my SKB molded plastic flight cases. Um, and even though I could wear it on my back, it just got too heavy and too uncomfortable. So unfortunately, uh, that bag had to go. Next up, uh, I had the soft protect bag that came with a Mike Lull that I once had. This bag, unfortunately, was on the softer end. I don't have any exact padding measurements, uh, but it wasn't as well padded as I wanted it to be. And uh, if you can imagine, this bag did not have the rigid sides I talked about, so you could fold this bag uh, in half. Um, and unfortunately, it, I was just not comfortable with the type of protection it was offering, you know, a high end, high end instrument such as a Mike Lull. Uh, so I never really used this bag much at all outside of the house and uh, it eventually got sold off along with the base. Next up, we have the Gator Pro Go. So this is the full scale electric base uh, version. This base, uh, this base case rather, compared to all of the other cases I've both previously owned and currently owned was by far the longest. It was a good inch, inch and a half longer than, uh, than this one here. So there was tons of room inside, which probably makes it more ideal for a longer scale base, such as a 35 or a fan fret, a multi-scale base, uh, or a longer base with uh, like a larger, longer body. Uh, so if any of those uh, seem relevant to you, then the Gator Progo gig bag might be right up your alley. The Progo was solidly built. It was a great bag. And I mentioned the poncho idea earlier. This one had a built-in waterproof uh, raincoat that conveniently tucked into uh, the top part. I never used it, mostly because I was too lazy. Uh, but that option was available to you. That bag was also great in that the neck cradle was Velcroed in, so you could adjust the position perfectly. And unlike the mono, uh, the neck cradle uh, thickness fit the necks uh, much better, in my opinion. So far, great bag. What was the problem I found with the Progo bag? I'm gonna put up a picture here. Uh, unfortunately, I don't own this bag anymore, so I, I did scale uh, and, and uh, superimpose this photo onto the other ones. If you look at it, so first of all, as you can tell, it's longer than everything else. But if you look at the position of how the backpack straps are sewn in at the top, the position is quite a bit lower uh, than the others. Now, by itself, you might not really think that's a big deal. However, for me, when I wore it, because the backpack straps were stitched in lower and with the bag being taller, I found it to sit, the whole bag sat higher uh, and taller on my back than I really wanted it to. So that bag did have a tendency for me to kind of want to pull me back a bit just from a balance point of view. And because the whole thing was taller, uh, if I wasn't careful, I would bang it into uh, door frames and exit signs and, and things like that. So with that bag, I had to be much more careful with my posture, my balance, and um, door frames. So unfortunately for me, the, the comfort and the fit of the backpack straps for my body, uh, unfortunately, got an X on, on that criteria. 
Next up, we have another Gator gig bag. This is the Transit bag. Now, this is a is a very nice looking bag, so it definitely gets that kind of point for for the bonus round there. It's a good gig bag. The interior neck cradle again was velcroed in, so adjustable. So thumbs up the Gator. Uh, for doing that. And again, it wasn't overly thick, so I did feel it fit the necks uh, pretty well. My problem with the transit bag is the sides were a little more flexible than I wanted it to be. Uh, so I was looking for a little more side rigidity and side protection. And the other part that unfortunately did not help this bag was presumably to save on shipping. This bag uh, was shipped to me folded down. Um, so that kind of made a permanent crease in, in the side walls. And that bag always had a bit of a curve to it. No matter how I tried to bend it the other way to straighten it out, that bag always had a bit of a curve to it. We can, uh, from the current collection, we can start right to left. Uh, and kind of examine the bags that I have here in the studio. This was the gig bag that came with my landing fretless face. Uh, it's made by Studio Slips. It has this giant compartment at the front. You can put lots of stuff in here. But right off the bat, uh, you can probably guess what I'm going to say. It doesn't have rigid sides. And this bag clearly folds onto itself. It also has only one shoulder strap. Uh, so short of my base being shipped to me in, in this bag, I have never taken this bag outside of the house. Next up, this is a bag from uh, Atelier Z and my Atelier Z Ken Ken signature short scale base uh, came to me um, with this bag. Same problem as the other one, no rigid sides, and the bag folds onto itself. But it doesn't have a, a reasonable size front pocket. The padding uh, is going to be likely less than 20 millimeters. More flimsy backpack straps, but there are at least two of them. Like the other one, uh, Except for having a base shipped to me in this bag, this bag has never left the house. Okay. Next up, we have... This is the Groove Gear uh, Gig Blade Sliver. Now, this bag, I think, has been discontinued and replaced with, with a newer model. Um, the shape of this gig bag, this kind of triangular shape, kind of reminds me of those uh, music store branded uh, levy bags from the 90s. Uh, it's very slim. That's what this bag has going for it. Uh, so if, if space is really at a premium, then this bag might be okay for, for that. I currently have my Mustang in it. This bag has a built-in neck cradle. You can, you can feel it. It's not overly thick, which is good, uh, but there's nothing to adjust and you can't remove it because it's, it's built in and hidden under all the padding inside. It has a nice protective area so your bridge screws don't tear up your gig bag. I ended up buying this bag from a music store closing sale, so... I got this bag for uh, uh, for a song. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the rigid size like I talked about. You can't fold it onto itself, uh, but due to the slim design uh, of this bag, it it just kind of sits funny in the in the trunk. It does have two backpack straps. Uh, Unfortunately for, for my body, uh, I find this bag not particularly comfortable to wear. Um, 
So if, if I really needed to take the Mustang out, I would actually swap it into uh, another bag. Uh, but for but for right now, the, the Mustang lives in in the groove gear. So this is a nice, easily wipeable uh, surface like I talked about before. It looks relatively weatherproof. The zippers are, um, are, are pretty solid. Uh, but for me, it, it's, a, it's a comfort issue uh, when I'm wearing it. So I'm not entirely sure I would get another one of these. Um, and also from a design point of view, there's no front pouch for me to squeeze a tuner or a DI box or anything else like, uh, like that in here. So yeah, I'm not sure I would buy this one again. Next up, we have a music area bag. Now, I ended up getting this bag from a Sweetwater sale. So, for the quality of bag, uh, this I actually think, uh, and I'll tell you this right off the hop, I think this is the best gig bag I own. There's tons of room here in, in the front pockets uh, for all the uh, mentioned accessories. These are solid zippers. So there's there's lots of room inside uh, with my Tele Z short scale in it. And if I'm if I'm traveling more than just to and from my my regular gig, then I do typically put more padding underneath uh, the body and and up here just to keep the base from sliding up and down. If you can see in here the neck cradle is completely removable and is velcroed in but if you look at the dimensions of the velcro you can tell they kind of did intention uh, they put it there intentionally for a standard scale base so the upper dimension for for the neck cradle will get in the way of of, a, of the tuners and, and the headstock of a, of a short scale base uh, but fortunately you can remove it and you can put it lower I typically don't use it at all for this base because I just find there's so much padding. There's 30 millimeter padding uh, on this bag. So it's quite thick that I don't actually need the neck cradle uh, for this particular base. All right, take the base out. Like all the other gig bags, this one also has uh, a protective uh, layer there, so the screws on your bridge uh, doesn't uh, rip your bag. And also up here, there's a thicker uh, part here, so if you end up with you know string ends that pop out, uh, it won't rip your gig bag. So. Two very comfortable backpack straps uh, and if you don't want it to catch on other things in the van you do have the option of detaching them and then folding them into this fold away patch uh, pouch here so they will completely tuck out of the way I like the integrated handles here uh, that are sewn in but they're otherwise pretty low profile so they don't look they don't add to the extra bulk uh, in terms of the uh, overall look so you can just stick your fingers in there and overall I, th I think this music area bag uh, the model is called the wind 30 this has been discontinued now uh, but if you go to the music area website they have uh, very similar bags uh, available that you can get uh, through their website as I understand it music area uh, makes gig bags for other companies um, don't quote me on that, but certainly uh, this Win30 bag here uh, is, is a solid gig bag. And I got to say, this is the best gig bag I currently own. Just in terms of design, durability, function, uh, removable neck cradle. And I think it looks great too. All right, next up we have the classic mono M80 gig bag. 
Now, I've had this gig bag the longest, uh, and I'm pretty sure I bought this bag over 10 years ago. Uh, and it's been all over the place with me. Um, and yet, surprisingly, I have not ripped anything. The backpack straps are still solid. Uh, all the stitching around uh, the pouches are still intact. And uh, yeah, overall the durability of this bag has been, has been fantastic. The front pouch, you can put lots of your, your gear inside. The only thing I did manage to do on, on this bag after you know a decade of use is I finally did end up ripping uh, this part here. So this part protects uh, uh, the bag from bridge screws and, and whatnot. I did end up ripping this part just from repeated uh, usage. So fortunately, uh, my wife was able to sew it back on here so it, it, it works again um, and again this one like the other bag has the protection up here to uh, protect your bag from strings and tuning pegs but overall the m80 bag has served me uh, very well and i've been quite happy with it my biggest gripe with the m80 bag as i mentioned earlier was the neck cradle so this neck cradle was not uh, Velcroed in, it was stitched in. And it had the kind of Velcro part that kind of keeps your instrument uh, secure. But with the location of it, I found it, it, it got in the way of the headstocks of my short scale bases. But more importantly, it's just too tall. So again, this measures over two inches in height. Uh, but if you look at the dimension of the bottom of the body to the neck, that all that only measures uh, you know one and a quarter inches, one and a half inches. So what ended up happening, or take this again, is even if the neck cradle were in the right place, it would make the base sit at a bit of an angle. And because this is kind of a, a fender style headstock, it might be different if it were a tilt back again, but if your base is sitting at that angle, when you zip the bag up, I felt there was too much pressure here at the top of the bag, kind of trying to push the base down that way. Uh, and if you're essentially using the neck as a bit of a seesaw or a lever um, at, at the cradle point. And that just didn't work out for me. So I ended up uh, cutting the neck cradle out. Um, now, I'm sure if you do this, it will void your warranty. Uh, so use at your own risk. However, I'd already had the bag for several years and I had to make the bag work for me. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. So I ended up cutting this out. So if there's anyone from Mono watching this, make this shorter and make it removable. But otherwise the, uh, the M80 bag has served me very, very well. I did try to buy a Mono Vertigo bag because uh, those have great reviews uh, during the pandemic, but the, as I understand it, Mono is so back ordered uh, that good luck ordering one. Uh, maybe things are different now, but I had difficulty getting uh, and ordering a, a Vertigo bag. And I did try the base sleeve in a store and it just, it didn't fit my bases particularly well. The neck cradle was integrated and, uh, and stitched into the bag. Uh, so it, it just didn't fit the way I wanted it to fit and I couldn't take it out. So, um, the sleeve wasn't for me. All right, what do we have next? This is a gig bag that came with my F base. Uh, 
Now, I don't have confirmation of this, um, but this bag looks an awful lot like my other music area bag. It has the same integrated handles. The front pouch is nice and large, uh, but overall the design and the backpack straps, this one is branded uh, F base here. Uh, this one's a little slimmer than my music area win 30 but just overall design feature set uh, and padding uh, it, it just very much reminds me of the music area bag i know the older f bases used to come in protect contagos uh, but i think this has been a relatively new switch like the other music area bag this one had it came with uh, a removable Velcroed neck cradle. So thumbs up for that one. So let's measure this. If you can see that neck cradle there. This dimension is only 1.25 inches, which as I uh, talked about earlier is I think the perfect height. So this way with, with the neck in there, you're not, uh, you're not pushing it further uh, up than you really need it to be. And because the Velcro straps run uh, lengthwise, you can go up and down for this and still have it uh, stick on nicely. So I think this neck cradle is, is, a, is a good design. This bag also came to me with uh, extra bumpers. So uh, I've yet to take the F-Base out of the house. Uh, but if I wanted extra protection, I could put a few extra layers uh, on the bottom to protect the body. And I can also uh, put one at the top to protect the headstock. So. so this bag, even though I haven't really taken it out of the house so far, ticks all the right boxes. I did look at uh, the company Reunion Blues because they had received tons of praise and uh, good feedback uh, in the from the online community. So I really wanted to check out a bag from Reunion Blues. But then with all the same criteria, I uh, went looking on their website and I really needed to figure out which ones had removable neck cradles because that information was not very clear online. So I wrote an email to uh, through their website and someone from uh, from the company wrote back to me and uh, or put a copy of that email up here telling me that most of the models had permanently sewn in neck cradles that were not removable but only the uh, the last model there had a velcroed in um, neck cradle. So if if that is relevant information to you, then uh, the models are listed in that uh, email, and uh, hopefully that will help you and and your journey. Ultimately, I didn't end up getting a Reunion Blues bag, um, even though I wanted to try. Uh, try one. They're certainly a bit on the expensive side, but I had the opportunity to buy this bag. Now this is an older, uh, it's an older model. It's also made by Protec. This is their Contego uh, model. So tons of, tons of storage here. This bag is probably the heaviest of all I have, of, of my, all my other bags. But I wanted this bag for uh, for my court five string. And there are lots of things this bag has going for it. So this bag has all the usual protective features that we've already talked about. Now this neck cradle is gigantic, but this Velcroed in and it is adjustable so you can move it um, up and down and it has a kind of a neck grabber support part that will help lock it in place. 
Um, and the thickness of this um, is, is perfect. I knew I wanted a bag that would uh, have a supportive neck cradle because that base does have a tilt back headstock unlike all the other bases uh, in, in the other bags. So this one fits the court um, very nicely. The only feedback I would have uh, for, for ProTech is that they put a zipper here, which might be useful to put, you know, picks if you play with a pick, uh, or, you know, some, something small, cash. Uh, but the problem with this zipper is, unless you have your base locked in with, with this part here, you might have the risk of the zipper scratching up and marring the back of your neck. So I think if I were to uh, travel with this, I would either have to remove this zipper or tape it down somehow, or be very careful and always using uh, the, the, the neck holder all the time because I don't want the metal zipper uh, marring up the back of, of the neck. But otherwise, uh, this bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. It's got uh, a hideaway area for for the backpack straps here. Uh, it's got you know carry handles in all the right places. This one also has the extra protection of having this Velcro piece here, just to uh, you know peace of mind, so your bag doesn't. You know, open unexpectedly. Uh, yeah, so overall I've been uh, pretty happy with with this bag uh, for my five string. So I hope this uh, gig bag rundown, which is completely unsponsored, uh, I, I hope it is useful to you in helping you decide which gig bag is right for you. There are lots of options uh, for you to choose from and each uh, manufacturer has several different uh, models within their electric bass line and I think the, uh, the the principles that I talked about uh, that I look for in a gig bag apply to both standard scale as well as short scale basis in terms of bag design and the features of the bag. What I really really look for in a gig bag just to summarize now is having a removable neck cradle because I really think that makes it uh, more versatile in helping you find the perfect fit for the dimensions of your instrument. So I think that is a key design feature. Unfortunately for me, due to just the overall length of a lot of my instruments uh, and having tried many different models, my instruments don't comfortably fit in an electric guitar bag, which is why I own nothing but uh, standard scale electric bass bags. That does leave me with a lot of extra room at the headstock area, but like I mentioned earlier, I would either stuff towels in there, uh, or in the case of the music area bag, I have these extra bumpers that I can, uh, you know, cradle the headstock in uh, for extra, extra protection. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. Until next time.